everybody. It's me, Jennifer Stenhouse from Little Metal Foxes, and I just wanted to talk to you guys tonight about tool tips, and I've got tool tips with, um, uh, we're going to be talking about scribes and center punches, because there's a difference, and there's some good ones out there, and I am going to, um, Anderson from Lion Punch Forge to join me, and here he comes. I think we got him coming up. Hi, Chris. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Pretty awesome. Just Good. Just the bench. Good to see you. Just finished me making too. Your... Oh, you too. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting what are we talking about bench, today? Working on stuff. Say what? What are we talking about today? We are talking about scribes and uh, center punches. And uh -huh. I knew that you have a vested interest in such a thing um, because you've got an awesome little tool for such a thing. And you, here's the thing is, yeah, I'll make sure my lights are on. Um, I knew that we were going to have this talk beforehand and I was going to go grab one of my, my, my like, so I recycle garage door springs and turn them into scribes, but and you can see those on the website. But just for this, I took five minutes away from making dinner and I did a DIY project. Okay. And I have it here with me. Let's see it. What is it? So we all have a bunch of these things lying around. Right? What's that? Allen what wrenches. That? Oh, yes. Yes. So. I What'd took the Allen wrench. Yeah. I mm -hmm. made hey, an Chris. angle. On. Where's my Here's camera? At? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you just grind down the tip on there? Grind down the tip. I polished it. And as long as I don't overheat the steel, this is still a hardened steel. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. I can... Well, and that gives you a really handy center punch real quick, right? Yeah. When you need one. Yeah. yeah. Center punch. Or and... This one's my, but I like having flat edges on my scribe because it can go along a line whereas right. sometimes the the round ones are round ones are good but i like yeah. having a nice flat edge on one yeah you know the flat edge is really kind of nice for the same reason it's really nice on a pencil you know because you can get a nice grip on it doesn't spin in your hand and yeah so i can totally see that i think that's really good and the um, hex keys are nice because they have little flat spots for you to index your fingers on Right, right. Well, and you've got the little, you know, hook too. So it's sort yeah. of like rest in a certain position. And uh -huh. those things are great for all kinds of stuff. I use them for um, doing Viking chain, Viking knit chain. They're mm -hmm. great for that because they've got all those flat sides that work really well. Guess what that is? Yeah. That's an octagonal I can't see it. mandrel. It is. It's an octagonal mandrel. I love it. For those of you that uh, haven't had Sesame Street yet, that's eight-sided. Mm. <laughs> An eight-sided mandrel. Yeah. Um, and there's six-sided oh, ones, which sorry, would be this is a, a six. key. <laughs> this is a six. Sorry. There we go. It's close to eight. Yeah. I, I couldn't see it, so it could have been eight. <laughs> We're going to say that it's eight. But yeah, there's... Okay, there's there's six and eight-sided ones. Great. <laughs> well, getting back to my point. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of great things you can use for scribes and center punches. And in fact, you know, just a really good big nail works great as a center punch when you need one, you know? Um, so, you know, I mean, you can always, you know, go out and get a really nice little center punch and, you know, it has like the little knurling and it's all polished and it has a nice little point on it. And, you know, these are great and I definitely recommend having them. Um, but, you know, I've got all kinds of little makeshift things that have come out of other tools that, you know, were designed to center punches. But these guys, I, this is one of my favorite things, Chris, that I'm going to share with you. Ooh, what's that? I'll show you in a minute. You first. Okay. Okay. So this is one of my favorite things. It's very sexy. It's a, a Japanese uh, scribe. And they make these in a couple of different sizes. Um, but one of the things I really love about this is I've never seen two that are identical because they're hand turned on a lathe. And so they all have a little nice. bit, um, this, this beautiful little, you know, uh, gradation in the, in the thinness and the handles all just, they feel really good because they all feel like they're handmade. Um, and as nice. a, a scribe, they're really nice and they're super sharp. 
So I've got a couple of these, and I like these not just for, for a scribe, but as a nice little mandrel too, because it gives me this nice concentric, you know, little jumpering shape when I need one. So I use that a yeah. lot. But hardware store, mm -hmm. little punch. Yeah, Perfect. those work great. Ice hey, Kenzie. Looks like Kenzie's out there. Hello. And um, ice picks work great. Yeah, I've got a big old ice pick that's great for that. Voila, when you need a really big one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when you're having studio openings, this is great as an ice pick, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I love the or ice for pick. That, that's... Or for that, uh, you know, awkward jeweler you didn't want showing up. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that commission that won't go away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I love this thing. I got this at uh, an antique uh, uh, sale. It was like a, a garage sale at this place that they had all these old tools, and I actually got that there. Um, the other one that I like a lot, and it's actually um, an aw, an A W L all all. I'm from I'm from Georgia, so it always I can't I can't do it, y'all. All. So when you when <laughs> but this one, I don't, matches. Oh, you're freezing up, freezing up, Chris. All y'all? Yeah, all y'all. <laughs> but this one I love. All, all, it'd be all y'all. All y'all can have an all. <laughs> That's right. And, and everyone can have one. So it'd be all y'all can have an all. <laughs> but this one I love a lot. This is actually, I got this one at, um, uh, <laughs> exactly. I got this one at Joanne Fabrics. And I love this because it, it has a little bit steeper um, uh, angle to the punch or the scribe. And the handle is a little um, cushiony. It's a little soft. But this is from the Martha Stewart collection. And I like to refer to it as the Martha Stewart uh, prison collection. But, <laughs> you know, jabby. But, um, but, yeah, I love this thing. And so you can pick up a little scribe like this at someplace like Joanne Fabrics, which is really kind of cool. Or... Um, uh, Michael's Craps, which is kind of awesome. So you're, fr you're freezing up, Chris. What's happening? Let's see. Um, also, you know, if you need something really quick, you can always make your own using something like a little um, handle using an old broken uh, burr like that one, which gives you, uh, you know, you can sort of sand the point down and make your own little scribe. But my, you know, and uh, to Chris's point, this one actually was an old uh, drift that got um, uh, its little point broken. And so I just ground it down to make a really nice, heavy center punch. So this one works great for that. So the difference, though, between your center punches and your scribes is that generally you're using a center punch on point to um, uh, knock a little hole. Hey there, Silver State Smith, Silver State, Silver Smith. Hello. <laughs> and, uh, um, the, the difference is that you're usually using a center punch with a hammer um, or uh, a mallet to punch a little dent in the, um, in the metal so you have a good place to drill. And the scribes are usually used for uh, drawing a parallel line or ascribing a line along an edge or making a mark by drawing the tool rather than like using a hammer to punch it. Right. Oh, hey, you're back. I see you. I'm What's back. That? What have you got? I'm trying to find, I'm trying <laughs> to find the best Wi-Fi spot. I may have, oh, I may okay. have to go All live right. in the front porch, which isn't a bad thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I brought my so, tools. So, um, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> there's, there's really a really good one that's like a tungsten carbide uh, scribe, which is really nice because it, you wouldn't want to hit this with a hammer. It has a beautiful little stylus handle. And uh, the point on it is like a, a carbide, which is really great for marking your metal. Um, but my favorite scribe of all time is using my double-ended pen vise with craft needles in it. And the reason that I like this combination so much is because it has a... Uh, the needles are a tool hardened steel and depending on what you're doing, if you're trying to get a nice little mark or a line or a really precise uh, tracing around another shape, 
the needles are, are sharp enough and flexible enough that they can follow that edge really nicely. So, um, so you get a really accurate, clean line. And if you're combining something like this with a Sharpie, you get a really accurate line because you can see it uh, in the Sharpie mark. Or if you're using something like, uh, like the blue layout fluid, that works really well too. So I like those two things, but and yeah. The nice thing about that is that you can take your sewing needles and you mm -hmm. can buff out your tip so it's not sharp, and you can use right. that for a little little setting setting burr or setting. A absolutely. Burr yeah, shape. absolutely, absolutely. And I'll a lot of times use the um, like the darning needles or the um, embroidery needles for that because they they are uh, the right shape for that. So you don't even have to change them because they just leather working needles work great. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice Anything part. that's not too sharp a point usually will do really well. Most um, of them are rounded already because you're trying to go through holes you've already made. Right, right. And you're not trying to necessarily, um, uh, yeah, you're not trying to scratch something or poke a hole in something. Um, you're usually trying to sort of push through the fabric rather than poke a hole through something. So a lot of times those, uh, those needles are a little more rounded and do a great job of doing things like burnishing and, and stuff too. But, um, but yeah, as far as the scribes and, and center punches, a lot of people don't know the difference between the two. So it's this is important to know that difference. Yeah, is that one of yours? Which one's that? Uh, it's not one that I made, but it's one of my, my, one of my favorite bench ones. Because yeah. Because it has a nice fine tip on it. Right. And it's relatively small. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Sometimes you need a little small one that gets into smaller areas or. Yeah. The what one of the other ones I see nope. a lot is the um, uh, the snap over punch or the, the pop over punch. And it has a spring in it. And that's really great if you don't if you don't have a hand free to use a hammer. Um, the problem with those is that sometimes that spring is wound so tight that it pops the metal too hard and you don't necessarily need like you're not trying to punch through the metal um and it's designed for a harder thicker metal so sometimes that's a little overkill but i have yeah. used that method for punching through for making a hole for piercing though yeah yeah and and that can that can do a good job if you don't want to bend the metal though sometimes that can be if it's thin that can be a little little tough um, but yeah, for center punching, my other go-to is a, a ball burr on a curved surface where you can't necessarily mm. hammer it or a form surface. I'll use a little ball burr to create an indent, uh, as a center punch. But what do you got, Chris? Show me those. What's this? So this is, this is, this costs about $15. Um, you can find them at Harbor Freight or Amazon or whatever. The cool right. thing about it is you have all these different shapes are all these yeah. different size men are uh, round. and they each of it's them one of julia's a favorite tools under. too yeah yeah so what you can do is you can use you can say for example you have a hole and you want to find the center of that hole for another piece you can find the corresponding around put it in the center of that corresponding hole and then punch through so that you can locate your hole on the other side so this is these are basically locating punches for machining and that kind of stuff. But the nice yeah, thing right. you can do is use these as mandrels for your jump ring winder. Right. You can use them as punches. And there's mm -hmm. all sorts of other fun things that you can do with forming around one of these. Absolutely. Or, um, yeah. You know, when you're doing all sorts of things. You can use it. They're, they're actually really good in combination with like a swage block as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can uh, create really nice, perfect curves with those. You're trying yeah. to like fine tune a curve if you're doing like a hollow form or something like that. Yeah, like a hollow box ring. Yeah, I've got one of those I'm making. <laughs> you do, and Julia has that class coming up too. So, um, yeah, her box ring uh, construction class is going to be on uh, July 17th and 18th, and she's got a couple in stock. Um, and and her box rings, I like making box rings, and I love my box rings. And I've seen some really cool ones, but I got to tell you, Julia makes the coolest box rings I've ever seen. So she does some really cool stuff and that's going to be a fun class. Huh. So yeah, for doing those kinds of like really well, even curves, that. those, yeah, those two are really good. What that's, that's called a, a what set? Uh, um, uh, oh gosh, it's not a drift. What are those things called? Uh, that set that they're, they're 
Center locating. Center locating. They're usually so used for gaskets. Locating punch. Yeah. Yeah. But they're usually used like for gaskets to do, um, yeah, to mark uh, your gasket holes and to. So what I'll do is say, for things. example, I have, I have a piece of a hole that I drilled in a piece of steel. And I need mm -hmm. to locate where my screw is going to go on a plate beneath it. Right, I right. Use one of, I use one of these guys to find that hole. And then right. that way it gives me a nice mark for uh, exactly where where I need to do my drilling. Or, or it's, it's basically like finding the center of an existing hole. Right, right. Yeah, love that. Yes. Sounds like Luna's there. Hi, Luna. Uh, Lu Luna had a, an emergency vet today. Oh, no. She, uh, she had it out with a B. And she... I've she had that all, happen. All of a dog. sudden became a Sharpe. Yes, I've had that happen to a dog. It stung him on the inside of his mouth. And yeah, I mouth came and home. Foot. Yeah, I came home and my dog looked like he went from an Australian Shepherd to a Sharpe. Yeah. And yeah, I had to take him to the vet and load him up with Benadryl. And yeah, she got, his, she got an IV bag full of steroids and a pill and a half of Benadryl. So she's dopey and tired right now. Yes, transfer punches. Thank you, Chris uh, Louder. Yes. yes, that's what they are, transfer punches. <laughs> Thank you. you. That was the word I was looking for, transfer punches. There's punch. some kind of word. Words are hard. <laughs> if Julia was here, she would know, but she's yeah. vacationing someplace right now, so she's not with us tonight. But yeah, you know, what's, you know when, I, when I'm usually doing something like, you know, a center punch, um, I'm usually grabbing, you know, you know, something like the standard center punch, but yeah, my... Seriously, my go-to scribe is this guy with a needle in it, almost yeah. always. But yeah, do you use the transfer fluid for stuff when you're doing like I marking do. and? I so I'll use it for machining when I'm making tools or something like that. Right, and then I will also use it when I'm engraving. Right. Oh yeah, that makes perfect sense because you can kind of really see what marks you're making through the transfer fluid. Yeah, and right. I use I use transfer paper too. Mm. So yeah, you can buy. Uh, the transfer fluid is often, one of the names of it, the brand names is Dicom. You can buy yeah. red Dicom. Oh, yeah, take, yeah. And then take blue transfer paper and transfer the blue transfer paper onto the red Dicom. Right. And then you have good contrast on, uh, on all that. So one of the questions that's popping up is what saw blade brand do you use? What do you like? I like saw Nanos. Blade? You like which ones? I like, there's a couple brands I like, but I've kind of settled on Nanos. Oh, the um, Nanos? Yeah, they're I've good. Tried, I tried, I like Pike. Pike makes okay. good blades. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of the, the laser gold. Uh, as of late, the, the tempering I'm not on either. them. The tempering on them. They seem to, uh, they break too easily. Uh, there's something something lately with the, the latest batch or the last couple batches they just don't have I've, the same temper that I want. I've never, sign. I've never had great luck with them, and um, it's yeah. I usually end up with like the Hercules uh, Lair works. Um, and hi, friends. <laughs> she says. Um, so yeah, I've never had great luck with them, and I usually end up going with either like the Hercules Whites, which are are fine. They're economy blades, but they do a good job for me. I you know they're tough as nails, and they they last pretty long. Um, the, uh, some of the, some of the blades, I hate it when they're, uh, they're not tempered correctly and they have a tendency to want to swerve automatically. They like have yeah. a curve in them. And so they're, they'll, oh, they'll pull one direction or the other. And that is really, that's one of the things about the, the golds that I had a problem with that they would yeah. constantly want to break to the, to the left or the right. And I couldn't get them to go straight. Yeah. Um, the, and pike, I, the pike platinums, if you can afford them, they're fantastic. Yeah. You go through tool steel like nobody's business. Uh, are you familiar with Dar Sheldon? No. He makes blanking dies the old way, like hand sawing them and tool steel. Yeah. Yep. And he uses he he only uses Pike's platinum blades. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, there's Shauna. Hi, Shauna. Hello. Shauna was our uh, salutatorian this year for Little Metal Foxes. Um, so yeah, shout out to, to Shauna. Yay. Um, 
Well, you know, I, there are so many, you know, crazy little tools that are out there for doing things like, you know, center punching and scribing. And some of them are, you know, can get really expensive. And, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, Lindy Howell at Silverworks says, you know, really the blades pulling isn't just your problem. No, it's not just your problem. A lot of times it is the blade wasn't uh, machined or uh, cut quite right, or the tempering's not right. The, or, to yeah. the tooth, the tooth dimensions, the way the tooth geometry is, can affect pulling one side or the other, or digging down in too much, or being so. It, it really, there really is a science to making saw blades. Yeah, and I've had I've had packs where I've had like one, two, three, four of them that that are doing that, and they're breaking mm -hmm. constantly. And I'll just throw out the pack because it's just ridiculous. So yeah, I always end up going back to like my Hercules whites because they're. You know, it's not a big deal. And like I said, they're tough as nails. So, and you know. I found that before, you know, using using another brand, using, you know, Laser Gold or another brand. Right. I find that I replace my saw blade when it breaks. Mm -hmm. Now that I've switched over to pretty much 100% nano, I replace mm -hmm. my saw blade when it wears out. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And that's, and yeah, the nano blades I like a lot. And you get those from Peppy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've got some of the nano blades and I do like those a lot too. But yeah. Well, let's see what else is happening. You're, uh, talking, about, uh, you're talking about the use an expensive scribe thing that you're talking about? Yeah. There are some real expensive ones out there that have like the, um, uh, like the tungsten carbide tip and the the really beautiful stylus handles and mm -hmm. you know I mean you can spend a ton on on stuff like that and I've seen people try to take a hammer to them and use them as a center punch and I'm like no because it'll shatter the tip brittle. on those and, and they're hard yeah the harder so, you get the yeah. more, the more uh, brittle it is right right so definitely beware if you're doing something like that don't those are not scribes are not intended to be used as a center punch. Center punches can be used as a scribe, you know, but, you know, if you're trying to just sort of like, you know, mark something in general, but you don't ever want to use like a, a really good scribe with a sharp point as your center punch because you don't get a clean true edge. So, well, yeah. Anyway. In the, in the same respect, if we're talking about these things, why not also talk about uh, dividers? Good point. You know what? Speaking of points. Um, <laughs> speaking of points. <laughs> I have two points. What? It's I a divider. That. So these are my dividers. And I love having like, I have like a little stand for them. These at the stand was originally uh, for my wax burrs, which I don't, I don't use it for that, um, obviously, but it works much better for my dividers. I just love it. Yeah, so cool. um, these, um, you know, dividers are, are kind of funny, and they, they do work really well as a scribe, especially if you're trying to do a, a parallel line along an edge, or you can set down your ruler and use the dividers to measure a distance and scribe along uh, with your, in combination with a ruler or a straight edge. Um, it gives you a nice parallel line or a line that you can follow if it's a curve edge as well. But one of the things that is important to note, I think, about these is that the the longer and flatter the legs are, so these are like really long, flat legs on these guys, they have a tendency to be a little um, wobbly. And so for bigger circles and things, this can be really helpful if you're trying to do a bigger surface. But I have to say, one of my favorites is my, uh, uh, I think it's the Starrett that I've got here. And I've got some from Eurotool and yeah, but having something, if it's shorter, having something that's got nice, sharp, square, dense legs like this is going to be really accurate. Um, and, you know, so if you're working smaller, something that's round or square is not going to be as floppy as the flat legged dividers. They can be a lot more accurate. So we'll have, and a lot sharper. We'll have to so. talk one of these days about sharpening those because that's a, that's oh. a nice end of itself. It is. It is. And that can really throw off the dividers as well if you don't do it properly. Yep. So, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so when you are um, working with your center punch, for example, um, what do you have like a go to hammer for that when you're doing center punching? I have a little tiny brass one that I use. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I know why you're using brass, but tell them why you're using brass. So 
it's kind of like uh, in my previous life, we'd, we'd use uh, the phrase soft to hard, hard to soft mm -hmm. um, when talking about self-defense and all that kind of fun stuff. But it's basically if you have a hard surface and you hit it with another hard surface, you're going to have deformation. You're going to mm -hmm. have damage to both hard surfaces potentially. So your hammer face and the top of the scribe. But if you take a hard scribe and hit it with a softer brass hammer, the deformation is going to happen in the brass, not in the steel. And you're not going to have that potential for little flying shrapnel off the top because scribes and stuff are tool steel. They're hardened. And when you take right. something hardened and hit it hard, it shatters. So safety wise, anytime you smack something with something else, one, you should have safety glasses on. So anytime you smack right. something Some, with something yeah. else. Always make sure you have on eye protection. Yeah. Eye protection. Yeah. Always have um, on some eye protection. The, the does, other thing that's important to note about that is that when you're hitting, hitting like a, a scribe or punches with steel, one of them is going to give, if it doesn't shatter, it's still going to give somehow. And so you end up with the, a mushrooming on the end of the punches a lot and on uh, the ends of you know, the tool, but it can also damage your hammers. So if you're using a hammer that has like a really beautiful face and you're hitting it with something that's harder than the face of the hammer, a lot of times you end up with all those marks on the face of your hammer as well. And that'll translate onto anything else you hit with a hammer if you're trying to like do a planished surface. So yeah, so that's the other thing. But yeah, having, having a, um, like a little brass hammer for, um, for center punching, I think is always a good way to go. Absolutely. It, yeah. Anytime, I, anytime um, I am going to smack a piece of hardened something, I'll typically yeah. use a softer type of, uh, you know, mallet like a brass right. mallet or a, you know, copper mallet. I have Absolutely. a copper mallet that I made and it's, it's, yeah. you have the weight behind well, and, it. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I definitely, if you're doing like disc cutting and things like that, for sure. The, and the brass hammers are usually not too terribly expensive. You can sand the faces down, you can refinish them and you can replace them pretty easily too. So, um, so yeah, if you're hitting, you know, steel with brass, it is going to deform and you are going to have to refinish it or replace it at some point. So, and that's kind of, um, it ends up being sort of a consumable, but, but yeah, I mean, you, you can take your brass hammer, put it in a vice, run it over with the bastard file a couple of times. Yeah. And you've got a new exactly. hammer. Case. Exactly. You right. Can't do so you can that do with a, uh, with a steel hammer. It's much harder to do <laughs> much harder to, to clean up that, that steel hammer with, uh, yeah, the bastard oh, yeah. file. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Well, cool. Um, one of the questions uh, that I see coming up is um, recently uh, one read that uh, you should loosen your saw blades for the day. Um, can you tell me why that's important, Chris? Yeah. So say, for example, I have a thread and I have tension on that thread, constant tension eventually that thread is going to, its fibers are going to give away. Mm -hmm. Now think about steel in the same way as fabric. It has these molecules, it has these uh, binding agents, whether, you know, atoms and all sorts of molecular structure. Yeah. And you have at, like dendrites, little yeah, crystal dendrites. At a, yeah. at a core level, that is like fabric. Everything mm -hmm. is holding itself together. And right. by, with all that tension, you wear it out. So if you don't take your saw blade out of your frame, one of two things happens. If you have a compression frame, like a Green Lion or mm -hmm. a Haymaker or uh, even Kevin Potter's new saw, right. what that's going to do is have constant, uh, constant compression on the spine of the saw. And it could possibly fatigue that metal. But more likely than not, your saw blade is going to be the thing to go. Right. So when it's pulling on your saw blade, you're actually creating uh, enough of a tension force that you're taking the temper out of the blade. So that if you don't take the saw blade out, the next time you use that saw blade, you may get one or two cuts in and it's gonna, it's gonna break or shatter. Right, so. right. Um, the, the other thing that um, uh, I know a lot of people, when I was in school, you know, when you're like working on a every dime counts sort of budget, um, 
one of the things that you, we would do with our adjustable saws is, you know, we'd break a blade, we'd shorten the frame. <laughs> and so we'd use tiny little bits of the saw, you know, if we had like nibbling it down, if we broke it. And the problem was that at that point, it's got weak points in the blade <laughs> and it's going to just continue to break and not saw straight at that point. Once, so, once the saw blade breaks, there's no reason to keep it. Yeah, it's done. Unless. Uh, I was just going to about unless you. <laughs> you unless okay. first. Unless you want to keep them in your, um, two reasons I keep them. I keep uh, some with my soldering stuff because I use them as like solder pins to sort of hold stuff where I need it. And I also use them uh, occasionally for doing pickle plating. So I actually have like a little jar of old broken uh, saw blades. And I know um, Amy Reeves down in Tacoma has like a jar <laughs> of broken saw blades and they keep them exactly for that purpose for doing uh, pickle plating. So, yeah. So what I was going to say is actually a little bit different. What do you do? So you can take your broken saw blades, mm -hmm. put them in your pin vise, and then use the side of that saw blade as a little bit, a little tiny itty bitty file. For wax carving, I use that a lot, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to get into like little areas. Yeah, oh. I absolutely do that. So I break them down to about an inch and will use them in my pin vise for my wax for cutting into small areas as a yep. little uh, and like even, saw Even file. if you have a little little silver area you want to try and scrape and you're yeah. not like filing it like you normally file you're using the saw blades because they're usually at a skew if you if you look down the saw the blades are or the uh, teeth are kind of like this. yeah they're they're cut yeah they're cut like that yeah they're cut like so doo -doo. what you're going to be doing is just scraping that saw blade across your metal and yes. you're going to be filing it to kind of move it down and take away yeah. those little itty bitty burrs that you may not be able to get to with like a rotary tool or something. Right, right. Well, and it's kind of nice, even using it upside down, it acts almost like mm -hmm. a burnishing tool um, yeah. in those little areas as well. So it's not actually cutting, it's kind of smoothing it down uh, like a little bit. Like using the back too. of the saw blade? Yeah. yeah. It, well, the back of the saw blade is, is a good burnishing tool in those areas too, yeah. So lots of ways to do that. Well, bonus content. Bonus saw blades, <laughs> saw blades. But yes, um, but uh, yeah. If you've got a favorite uh, punch or scribe out there, and you want to uh, share it with us, uh, tag me and Chris and uh, our hey. little metal foxes. Yeah, let's do a giveaway. Oh, <gasps> what you got? A scribe. A scribe. Yeah. You do. Yeah. You want you want to give it away right now? Uh. Or when? What what kind of giveaway would you like to do? I don't know. Let's let's give away a scrub. I got a lot of scrubs. Let's give okay. let's give one away. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Um, do you have like a trivia question that you want to ask and do it right now? Mm. We got fifteen people watching. Interesting. Huh. Hmm. I. Why? Here you go. Okay. All right. Here you um, go. All right. All right, everybody, you ready? Here's lot, your question. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of this going around right now. Okay. Why isn't bio-friendly pickle bio-friendly? That's a very good question. I know the answer to that. So it's a pickle question. So so if you're the first person to answer that, pickle. why isn't bio bio-friendly pickle actually bio-friendly so yes answer that question and we'll give you a scribe we'll send you a scribe because it's all acid no mm -mm, no it is all acid but you can neutralize the acid no it's not the acid no 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 and yeah let's see why isn't bio pickle actually bio-friendly and if you can answer it chris has got a scribe to give away Come on, one of you 15 people watching, because the metal resolved in it. Very good. Yes. Done. Uh, Shedtown Jewelry. Shedtown Jewelry got it. Yeah, actually, it's because the metal that's still in the, um, yeah, okay, yeah. So Shedtown Jewelry, you're the first one to answer it. Uh, Liarworks and Karen, thank you. Yes, because it contains metal. And the metal, you can't just dump it down the drain. Uh, because of the uh, the metal that is still uh, the metal salts that are still in the the fluid itself, because so it's still yeah. considered a copper sulfate or a silver sulfate, depending on what it right. is. Right, right, exactly. So yeah, Shedtown Jewelry, 
tell you what, if you instant message, uh, message Chris with your information and um, he can't separately, <laughs> he can send you uh, a scribe today. So yay, very good. Yeah. Yay, thanks Congratulations. Chris. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome. Also, too, we're going to be doing oh, we a giveaway. Also, we have another giveaway we're going to have to going to have to get on, too. We have to talk about this. Yeah. So there are a bunch of classes coming up. Oh, the snakeskin pattern class is coming up. And um, we've got a couple two spots left in that class. And the snakeskin is one of my favorite things because it gives you this beautiful pattern texture on the metal. It gives you lots of different colors on the, the metal. Um, and there are lots of different textures that you can do by patterning. The, it's using wire to create patterns uh, for sheet and using rings and things like that. So we've got two places left for that. Uh, flush setting is coming up on July 17th, and we've got spaces there. Uh, Julia's box construction class has a couple of spots. But Lion Punch Forge Engraving class, and we're going to do a giveaway. Yes? You want to sure. talk about it? Yeah. So okay. my, uh, my friends over at Pepe Tools and your friends over at Pepe Tools, they bought a seat in that class. Right. And then they said, you know, we kind of make this thing. So mm -hmm. let's just give that seat away. So Pepe Tools bought a seat for that class. And they wanted me to go ahead and arrange with Jennifer to uh, give that away. So right. We don't know exactly the details of that yet because, yes. you know, we haven't, we haven't really talked about it. We um, are going to do it soon though, because it's yes. on the, the class is on the 31st. So be sure to follow both of uh, um, Lion Punch Forge and Little Metal Foxes and keep an eye out for that giveaway. Because if you haven't signed up for the class, um, we do want to make sure we do that soon, uh, relatively soon in the next week or so. Um, just so that we can make sure that whoever's planning on that gets it. <laughs> now, but it's, it's a great it's... class, and there's so many cool things about the, the engraver that it's, um, yeah, I, I have learned so much from you and from working with it, and I've engraved all kinds of stuff uh, around my bench. <laughs> it's yeah. like, let's see what it does on here. <laughs> so, yeah. The, the, the people watching that haven't actually taken a class from Little Metal Foxes, I know this and you know this, but right. what makes... Little Metal Foxes classes, Little Metal Foxes. Well, I can tell you. <laughs> um, this gal, uh, partly. Um, but uh, Julia's teaching classes. We've also got AJ Power teaching classes in uh, our drawing classes. Uh, we have uh, Jan is, Jan Smith is going to be teaching our enameling class coming up on 8-7. And it's mark making and stencil making enamels. So that's going to be a great class. So the thing about the classes is that um, they're live and so they're interactive. And so you can uh, share information with each other. You can ask questions and you can learn from the other students, which is really important in a classroom uh, situation. And at the beginning of the lockdown, <laughs> in, uh, the, end of, the beginning of the end times, we uh, wanted to set it up so that, that students could still get that classroom experience of talking to other students and working with other people. Um, because a lot of times videos don't give you the same response, obviously. <coughs> and you end up having, um, you know, kind of a one way conversation and going back and watching a video, but you have lots of questions. And a lot of times with some of the videos that you're, you're purchasing, a lot of times they can't answer all of your questions. They have, you know, thousands and thousands of people that buy those videos and don't have time to answer every question that comes in. But um, we like to be able to answer those questions in the moment. Um, and I have learned a ton from other students. They have other experiences and references that they share, which is really nice. And a lot of times they're asking questions that you might not have thought of, which is really important. Um, so there's a lot of things that happen in the moment that wouldn't happen in an edited video too. So sometimes there are mistakes or sometimes there's, you know, things go wrong or something spontaneously comes up as a question um, that you wouldn't get in a video, you know. Um, videos are edited to, to be very precise and, and very shiny and, and great and to make it look easy. And a lot of times it's not. And seeing sometimes that, you know, I fail sometimes or make a mistake or Julia makes a mistake 
and that's part of making in a studio is yeah including yeah everybody does and it's important to know that and it makes it a lot less intimidating i think when you see that in real life that's what happens and so that's why we teach the classes the way that we do in person um it's a similar experience to the um the video or not video but the the interactive um, space that we use for our classes. And the students can go back and still watch the video for 30 days as well. And we're very good and at you, answering You don't email. have to pay extra so. for the outtakes because they're all included. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. But it's nice to have, you know, the handout, to go back and watch the video. You can take screenshots if you need images. You know, there's a lot of, lot of benefits to the Little Model Fox classes that you would not get with just a video. So, absolutely. And they're affordable. Um, they are. And that was the other thing. We really wanted to make it affordable. And we really wanted to make sure that our uh, the teachers were getting paid correctly. Because a lot of times in, in some situations, the teachers aren't getting paid well. You know, they're not getting paid um, a rate that's, that's, you know, really fair. And <laughs> we wanted to make sure that that they were getting paid at, you know, at least, you know, a certain amount, if not more. So, um, so we wanted to make sure that we were being fair to the instructors and that we were being um, as, as reasonable as we could with the, uh, what, what the people are paying for an hour. It ends up being like $17 an hour, yeah. which, you know, you can't get anywhere. <laughs> so yeah, it makes it incredibly affordable and fair to everybody. So yeah, that was, yeah. One of, one of our driving forces when we started setting up the classes, for sure. One of the, one of the things I love about working with you guys is the fact that you are so community-based. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the time you have, uh, you know, an interaction with an instructor, but you don't necessarily have a community to go along with it. Yeah. And the, the great thing about what you guys are doing with Instagram and you know, having all the other instructors from different places is that those those instructors are pulling in their community. Yeah, it's true. You're yeah. creating creating a larger one through Little Metal Foxes, and then you have you know all these people popping up asking questions. Are then somebody you know you maybe hit it off with somebody, or you may start strike up a conversation, and you know it's it's always nice to to have that community in what we're doing because Absolutely. sometimes the world seems small. I yeah, had somebody, absolutely. Somebody see my Instagram and come and buy some pearls the other day, and uh, just real. She real lived, you know, five minutes up the street. Yeah, but she's a you know, it's it, it's amazing. You know, I've got um, one of the gals that's been taking classes with us um, is in North Carolina, and she is like just a couple of miles from uh, some friends of mine who were, who were some of my first graduating students when I was teaching at Savannah College of Art and Design. And I was like, please go by. I'm like, do you know them? And she goes, yes, I do know them. <laughs> so, and it's like, you know, you, you do find that this is a community and there's a lot of um, connectivity, you know, between uh, different areas and different people. And a lot of us, um, uh, you know, know each other and know the community and, um, and if we don't, it's like, oh, well, do you know so-and-so? Yeah. And so there's like this really nice network of people that really helps to sort of um, support each other. And um, the Seattle Metals Guild is, is that it's way bit, too. So, yeah. You can find, you can find your own kind of built-in support group. Uh, True. You know, yeah. Michelle, Michelle Lier, she's, her and Charity are, are like sisters to me. Right. And, you know, that whenever we, I think we talk pretty much every day in some way, shape or form, but you know, it's through that, through that building community that, that I was able to find the both of them and they're you right. know, fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I would, I wouldn't thing. be familiar with them if it wasn't for you. So yeah, and I wouldn't know Julia. Right. Right. Or Helen. Or Helen. Yeah. Who's amazing. Who's moving into a new place today in London. So I saw hi, Helen. Um, yeah, pretty exciting. So yeah, it's so we do have a bunch of classes coming up. Take a look at Little Metal Foxes uh, at www.littlemetalfoxes.com and um, uh, check out the classes that are coming up. Uh, we've got Bezels Made Perfect, which is another giveaway. I've actually got one of your bezel. Oh, look at that! Tools here. Uh, where is it? 
There it is. Uh, in there. Oh, so I've got yeah. <laughs> I've got your little message. Yeah, uh, tight tool. tight space setting tool. Exactly. And that looks like it's a purple puncher. It is a purple puncher and the small space uh, burnisher. So we're gonna I'm gonna do the giveaway for that for the um, bezels made perfect class. So mm -hmm. that's coming up on August fourth. So yeah, nice. about a month away. So, you, uh, yeah. let me let me know when you do that. I'd love to be there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe we'll do it um, get, as we get closer to that class. We'll do it. Yeah. That. That'd be cool. Well, Chris, thanks so much for joining me tonight. My Talk pleasure. about scribes and all kinds of other things and ask, ask questions and give away a scribe tonight. I appreciate yeah. you doing that. That's Little awesome. Surprise. And, and congratulations to, um, uh, oh gosh, uh, who is it? Shed. Uh, where is it? Let me go back and find it Brandon. again. Oh, silver work. Yeah, Shedtown Jewelry. Yes, Shedtown Jewelry was our winner tonight for the scribe from Chris. So congratulations Shedtown. to you. Nice. Yeah. Very so, cool. So yeah, there you go. Send me, and, a, uh, send me a yeah. message on Instagram and I'll get that shipped off to you. There you go. All right. Well, join us next week for Tool Tip Tuesdays and uh, we'll get more tips out there. I think we're going to do one on sharp tacos. <laughs> and tacos exactly i think we're going to do one on sharpies coming up so julie and i had a, a rather interesting uh, sharpie uh face off last week what, was <laughs> so, it pointed i like the retractable uh ultra sharp but we were talking about um i meant using, your conversation using our sharpies as mandrels actually <laughs> so, it was kind of fun anyway all right. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. it. See you guys Everybody later. have a good night and we'll see you later. Bye.